Welcome back to AI Insights Innovation, where we talk about the truth around AI and its correct usage within the enterprise. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, B-List Geek, and an analyst with DuckCube Research. Let's get to work. So at the end of the day, this is a market texture concept. Um, in other words, we have a tendency in the world of technology uh, to move after certain things, and uh, whether it is that thing or not, whether it's a cloud or not, or whether uh, it's AI or not, they rebrand it uh, in using this technology branding name. And of course, we've had AI washing. We talked about that here. We certainly have cloud washing that occurs, you know, since the late uh, late 2000s when people were, uh, you know, uh, basically repositioning their systems as clouds when they weren't clouds. And now we have AI providers that are selling their systems as open when in many instances they're not providing the characteristics of being open. And enterprises, rightfully so, are extremely confused in terms of how we're going to make all this stuff work and play, whether this stuff is open or not, and what are the characteristics of something being open, what's the value, and we're, that's what we're going to talk about today. So how are we defining open washing? Well, open washing it engages, exaggerates the commitment to openness while maintaining significant control over the AI systems. So in other words, they're saying it's open, and they're selling it as something that's open, but they're maintaining control over the majority of the systems. In other words, the data, uh, the core libraries, things that like that that you're going to need to have access to if you're going to rebuild the system. And so if the definition of open source, and this is the definition that many people use, is my ability to get in there and change the system, all aspects of the system, and redirect it in uh, for my particular use case, then those aren't this. <laughs> so these are very different systems, uh, and many of them are proprietary, uh, even though they're being called open. So it's similar to previous trends like cloud washing, as I mentioned earlier, it represents a marketing strategy, again, rather than true democratization of the technology. So this is being sold as something that's com completely, uh, that's supposed to be beneficial to the enterprises. Uh, they're assuming that just because they see the word open, that it is open, and in many instances, that's not the case. So the deal is, with some of these technology providers, and some of them are in the cloud, and some of them uh, basically sell AI for on-prem, some of them sell both, uh, is that uh, it's limiting access to core components that you're going to need uh, to access the capabilities of the system. So it's not truly open. So they let you change some stuff, but you try to get in there and change uh, kind of the core IP of the system or what they view as something that's their property, they're not gonna allow you to do that. And if you read the licensing agreements, those are gonna be in there. So the sell something is open, but the license agreement will limit you to only being able to change a few components. So data sets, training methods are often withheld from the users who are trying to augment these systems and they don't provide genuine customization. Uh, friends of mine have complained, certainly developers, that uh, these systems that are really being sold as open, when they get into them and they try to make some of the changes that they need to do to adjust them for their particular use case, you can't do it. And there's no legal way for you to do it. They limit the capability. And if you've already made a commitment to this particular AI tool or technology, then you're already down the road. You've married that tool and technology and it's too late to swap them out. So you have to deal with the limitations of them saying they're open, but necessarily not being open. So outwardly open models usually lack complete underlying features um, necessary for full-scale deployment. So I would consider that as a, as a test. In other words, if something's selling a particular technology, in this case AI, as open, then you have to have uh, a complete access to the underlying features that are necessary for full-scale development and deployment of the systems. You have to remember... We came from a world when we had open, um, open Unix systems and, and, uh, and different open database technologies and things like that. Uh, everybody made a commitment to that technology because they could get in there if they needed to and make changes to the technology for their particular use case. Now, most enterprises didn't do it. In some time cases, if they did it, they did it under some sort of an agreement with the company that may be selling the open source stuff, people like Red Hat at the time. But this is different. Uh, this is being promoted as something that it's not. And the capabilities that I think people are, are think they're getting, they're just not getting. And that's the core issue here. So the other thing besides access to core components is there is a false perception 
of transparency uh, within these systems. AI firms, AI technology companies selectively release model parts, creating a facade of transparency instead of genuine openness. And so in other words, they're, they're talking about a transparency, but not necessarily providing it. This is uh, you know, partial, uh, partial disclosure, which distorts the principles of the documentation, accessibility, and reusability of the AI development. So there's nothing wrong with this, by the way, if you understand the limitations of what they're calling open. And this is why uh, many times throughout my career, when people have talked to me about their stuff being open, I always tell them, what, what does that mean to them? What's the definition? And you normally find out that there is restrictions to certain aspects of the system that they don't want people to mess around with because they view it as proprietary to them. Uh, those are their crown jewels. That's their IP. That's perfectly fine. I'm just saying that we need to disclose that if that's the case. We need to be a little bit more open and honest about what the accessibility, what the transparency is of these particular systems, what you can do with it, and what you can't do with it. So the big thing is we're getting into concentration of the power of AI within a few companies. And the reason why is a few companies can only afford to build some of these uh, highly valuable LLMs. And it takes, in some cases, many days and many millions of dollars to train these models. That's something that you know smaller startup tech providers can't do. So there's immense resources required for developing LLMs. And it leads to basically uh, the ability to sell this particular technology, the power of this technology, left in the hands of a few providers out there. Having said that, it seems like we're, we're probably dealing with an LLM a week, but you do notice that the LLMs are coming from, you know, companies with valuation near a trillion dollars are not necessarily comp uh, moving from the startups or even, you know, mid-sized companies. Smaller enterprises may find it increasingly difficult to build their own AI due to prohibitive costs. And so this is going to run into an issue that a lot of enterprises are going to deal with. So in other words, if you're going to deal with AI, you're going to leverage LLMs, uh, you're going to leverage foundational models, you normally have to make a commitment to a particular technology company, whether it's IBM or Google or Microsoft, somebody or all of them. And that becomes a risk unto itself. If they do pivot and move in a different direction uh, and you're dependent on that, that, that technology that they built, you're left holding the bag. And because it's not open, you can't go in there and make the changes to it and probably can't afford to make the changes to it. Uh, you're running a risk that you're gonna have to completely redeploy your existing AI infrastructure using somebody else's tools and technology. And that's gonna be incredibly risky and incredibly expensive. And in some instances, it could kill the business. So what are the challenges for the enterprise? Prizes, businesses should critically assess the claims of openness and AI models. Uh, looking to concentrate on details on the modification of the system. Always ask the what if. What if I have to change the data? What if I have to change the libraries? What if I have to change the inference models? What if I have to change the API management system? That's part of these whatever uh, AI technology you're looking to uh, commitment commit to that's, that's being called open. And if the question is uh, a lot of caveats and a lot of things you can't do, then it's probably not open. It's, it's, it's functionally equivalent to private technology. And so just consider it as such. And that doesn't mean don't use it. If the technology fits, perfectly fine to leverage that technology. Just understand that the limitation is there where it's likely not to provide you with the open benefits. So these restric restrictions can also accompany so-called open models that can undermine the perceived accessibility. And again, we're not getting the value of a truly open system. And it's interesting, I, I, I much better respect a company that's selling me something that they say is proprietary uh, because I know what I'm getting in buying the technology. But if they're selling me something that they say is open and it turns out not to be open, then it's a bit of a confusing thing. And while I am you know enough to ask the questions and really kind of determine what's open and what's not, uh, in many cases, enterprises are not asking the questions and they're accepting something as being open because it's being marketed as open when it's not open. And so they're giving the plus points based on the fact that they're considering a technology, in this case, AI technology, is leveraging open characteristics where they're able to get in there and maintain and, and, uh, and modify the system when that's, that's typically not the case. So this leaves smaller entities at a disadvantage uh, unless you're, you have uh, you know, um, good buying power or able to 
you know, uh, move the company and doing the modifications for you, you're going to be stuck left holding the bag. So even seemingly open models like Meta's, you know, Llama 3, you know, come with limitations restricting their adaptability. And so this Llama's always, always tossed up to me as an example of an open AI system. But if you look into the detail, and by the way, I'm not picking on Meta, uh, because this is a situation that's systemic to the majority of uh, AI systems out there that are being sold as open. Uh, they don't provide the adaptability and there's restrictions based on what you're able to do. So you're able to do some stuff, um, and that's probably why they, they uh, position it as open, but it's truly not open because you're not able to get to every aspect of the system and changing the deployment and modifying the technology. So I guess the purpose of this show is to really inform and, and sound the alarm and educate people on the fact that they're going to have to be vigilant uh, in terms of you know, how they're picking this AI technology, if indeed the open aspect of these systems is something that you consider a desirable characteristic. And so you're going to have to go beyond some of the details and beyond some of the architecture to figure out what's actually being offered. And so either employ somebody to do it or do it yourself. Um, but fortunately, uh, the way in which they're being marketed and sold, and, and by the way, this may not even be well as well understood by the people who are selling it, the salespeople and the sales engineers, um, but you're going to have to read the license, you're going to have to look at what's open and what's not, and you're going to have to look at scenarios in terms of how you're going to recover if something happens to the company or they pivot, which is more likely for a large company where they go a different direction and uh, leaves uh, this particular AI system uh, out to pasture and either you have to maintain it yourself, which is the great thing about having an open source system, we can keep it and maintain it if we need to do that. Or you're going to have to pivot and get something else involved. That's a huge amount of risk, as we mentioned earlier. So focus on the practical use cases within the constraints uh, and avoid falling into the open washing trap. So this is a trap, uh, very much like cloud washing. I remember doing, uh, you know, uh, talking about that and talking about different companies. And, and, you know, basically back in, you know, 2008, 2009, when cloud computing first started to emerge, Everything was was a cloud, whether it was an on-prem system or on your phone or whatever, because there was really no restriction for them doing it. They're not breaking the law. It's not fraud um, by them using some of these terms. And the same thing with AI that we see today. Now, I think everything is AI powered. You know, sometimes whether it is or not depends on the degree as how much AI is going to be in the system. And now we have this open issue, which is coming up over and over again. And I think a lot of value is being wasted in the fact that the enterprises aren't hip to the fact that the open stuff uh, has a question mark after it. Uh, and to the degree of almost everybody out there that has some open, uh, open on the system has some restrictions that need to be understood, and they're not bothering to understand them, which is core to everything I'm saying here. So this is your warning. So do your due diligence. Figure things out. Well, awesome. That's all I have for you this week. We'll get back to some other AI topics next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my other assets. Check out my InfoWorld blog at InfoWorld.com. My uh, courses out on LinkedIn Learning, including uh, half a dozen or so AI courses out there and Ingentic AI courses out there. Having a lot of fun with that. My course out on Go Cloud Careers with the Generative AI uh, fully mentored course, you know, having lots of fun. And also my book, uh, insider's guide to cloud computing you know check out my uh, colleagues uh, colleague stuff as well a lot of great podcasts here a lot of great videos here this is a great resource for where you if you're looking to keep up with it you know keep checking back here uh, i work with lots of organizations like this and this one tells the truth and it works from the data and it's fact-based and so that's something that's fairly rare these days so until next week you guys stay safe cheers <music>